right, so this apple naturally came off, it ripened on its own, and now it's been sitting in the fridge for like two or maybe even three weeks. And um, just from the close-up, you might be able to tell just visually that the first thing that I'm noticing is that it's starting to get a little bit of that waxiness to it, like that feel. And then visually, I'm starting to see some of the the wrinkling pattern that, <clears throat> excuse me, that you get from a an apple that's been sitting too long. So my initial guess is it's probably not going to store too well. I'm going to guess that the, uh, the texture on this is going to be not optimal as far as like eating it right off the tree. I don't think it would store super well, but we'll see. We're going to take a little bite out of this and see how it tastes. That's really good. I am getting definite berry flavor in there. As always, it's um, I'm not super great at identifying whatever berry it is, but let's take a few bites out of this and see if I can narrow it down a little bit. It has gone a, a little bit mealy, I can already tell that. This is that first bite, it's, it's gotten a little bit mealy. I want to say strawberry. I've mentioned that in one of my videos before that it, it, sometimes you get a bit of that strawberry flavor. I definitely think that that's in here. And I also think I'm getting some cherry in here. I think it's clo most closely resembles cherry to me. It's not sour like any cherry would be though. It uh, doesn't have any sourness to it. It just has the, because um, sometimes this particular apple is compared to a Granny Smith in sourness. I'm really not getting any sourness at all. Um, it's just, it's very pleasant. It's plenty sweet for me. Uh, it's, sometimes it's kind of regarded as like a lower sweetness in apple, but it's good sweetness. Very pleasant. Very good eating apple. One day I would like to bake with this apple too and see how it holds up in cooking. I think that would be a good experiment as well. These areas that are a little bit more red, you definitely get that cherry flavor. It's like a cherry and an apple combined. That is really, really good. So I wouldn't necessarily say it stores super well, but I think the um, that berry flavor gets accentuated a little bit by storing it. Because I definitely feel like the berry flavor is stronger now than it was straight off the tree. Very, very good. Uh, this is also unfortunately my last apple, uh, so that means that the red fleshed apple season is over. It feels too fast, it kind of came and went. <laughs> but. I've really enjoyed eating eating them and uh, getting to make videos about it because they're just such an interesting apple. I really wish that these were commercially available. I just think that would be so cool. But for now, all you can do is grow them yourself. There's a whole slew of red fleshed apple varieties out there. This is definitely not even the only one. Uh, this particular one, in, ca in case you're wondering, is called Odisso. It's uh, by the Red Love series of a whole bunch of varieties. Um, but yeah, these tend to produce uh, slightly smaller but more abundant apples. And then the Calypso, which is another big variety that I've got, produces larger but fewer apples, in my experience. So thank you all for watching. I really enjoyed eating these. And I'll see you in the next one. Tot de volgende keer. Thank you for everyone that likes the video, comments on the video, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And a double thank you if you also share the video around. I truly appreciate it and it motivates me to keep making more videos.